What's going on, everyone? Welcome to a Wednesday edition of Back Your Play with Q. As always, I'm your host, Rich Quinones. We are brought to you by our good friends over at Play It Again Sports, Fresh Roast Coffee as well, and our NFL insider, host of Lloyd Vance's NFL, uh, uh, Lloyd Vance's um, insider football show on 1029 The Game. Give him a follow on X at Lloyd Vance. Does a wonderful job, part of the Broad Street South Network, and always a contributor to BYP and on Q. I feel like it's been a minute since we uh, spoke and now we turn around and next weekend the draft is uh, right around the corner. Uh, we'll get to some news and notes, obviously, in our backyard. But I think I, I feel as though everyone's going to have their, you know, their mock drafts and all these quarterbacks. We, we know we know one thing is certain. Caleb Williams is going to go number one to the Chicago Bears. Book it, write it in, deaf taxes. He's going number one. But then there's this sentiment, okay, Washington at two, Pats at three, you know, are the Giants going to try to trade down? Are we going to see like four quarterbacks go in the first four picks? Um, let me ask you this first. In your mind, who is the most NFL-ready quarterback coming out of college that will obviously showcase during draft night? Okay, you know, it, it's that time of year and everybody's all excited about these quarterbacks and this and that. And for my show, we did some great research in terms of looking at uh, quarter first round quarterbacks from like 2000 to the last draft, and you could see a lot of them just <laughs> don't pan out. But we'll see. in this group, um, I, of course, I got to go with um, Caleb Williams out out of Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, JJ McCarthy, Penix Jr. You yep. know, and and the reason being is Caleb Williams has been in an NFL ready offense. Um, he, he's a better thrower of the football than all these guys. He's very consistent. And I know a lot of people want to put some red flags in terms of him crying his mom's arms after a loss and, and things of that sort. But I think, you know, talent for talent, uh, if you had him throw and everything, uh, leadership skills, I would go Caleb Williams. So Washington, think about this. If they're sitting at two, the thought is, uh, Jaden Daniels, um, you've got the Pats looking at Drake May. I thought if the Giants were going to do anything, run it back with Daniel Jones. I would love to see him maybe grab Marvin Harrison or a tackle. That's not going to happen. There's reports now that everyone's in love with J.J. McCarthy. I'm telling you right now, um, I, I don't like this kid at all. I don't. I think it was more or less a product of who he played for, the university and the head coach. Uh, that's just me. So if the Giants move up two spots, so you toss Arizona this year's third round pick, number 70 overall, next year's second rounder. Listen, it's a mock. It's a mock draft. We understand that. Uh, we know that Joe Shane didn't draft Daniel Jones. I don't know if JJ checks all the boxes. If Daniel Jones played 17 games, they were eight and nine, and he threw for 4,000 yards, 30 touchdowns and ran for five more. Are we having this conversation? No, it's because the kid got hurt so early and you can't trust the injury history. I get it. I understand that. I'm so tired of the reshuffling these head coaches, reshuffling these quarterbacks. I'm not a fan of McCarthy. I would go wide receiver. I would go tackle, run it back one more year with Daniel Jones. If it blows up in your face, then you cut ties with him. Sure, you know, they, they paid a ton of money to Daniel Jones. He's their guy. And you're correct. You know, yes, he's coming off that ACL injury and everything, but he's got to have an opportunity to come back and prove that he earned that contract. So uh, I think the Giants, if they're smart, they they go back, wait and see what's in the draft next season in terms of quarterback, but give Deion yeah. Jones his opportunity. Obviously, uh, in terms of the roster, there, there's not a backup breathing down his neck. But uh, when you look at the talent, uh, where the Giants are picking, you know, at that sixth spot, they could get a true difference maker. And, yep. and you and I have talked about the wide receiver has not been – position has not been what it used to be I since yep. Odell Beckham left this team. And if they have an opportunity to get a Marvin Harrison Jr., a, a Malik Neighbors, Roman Adunzi, you know, why not bring one of these receivers in? And then you, you touched on as well, this tackle group in this offensive line is the deepest of any position in this draft. Yeah, I mean, I'm choking over here thinking about his numbers compared with the stats. Um, you know, then you look at, I'm trying to think. If you were, uh, 
Washington's got to go quarterback. Arizona doesn't go quarterback. New England goes quarterback. Tennessee, Atlanta doesn't need to go quarterback. I'm just trying to card this out. I'm trying to see where maybe like Harrison would drop or if, like if, if, if someone can jump. Uh, I saw a mock where the Giants went up um, a couple spots. The Jets sat there and the Jets grabbed Harrison. That would be something, you know, give Aaron Rodgers one last toy to play with. But I just think you're taking a crapshoot when it comes to these quarterbacks. And and we just don't know who's going to be a player on Sunday as opposed to a player on Saturday. I mean, listen, we're seeing all this movement right now in the NFL, disgruntled wide receivers, quarterbacks being questioned, you know, hey, should we give the money to Tua? What's going on with Buffalo and Allen? Here you go, Diggs gets out, and now he's with Houston. And, you know, and um, you know, there was that disconnect. We saw it in the offseason. We saw it leading into the season. We saw it after their playoff loss two years ago, not including this season. So I'm just – I'm skittish with these quarterbacks coming out. And, again, you're investing – you're talking top five draft pick, right? You know, there's going to be wiggle room, but then these guys are going to want to get paid. And I think the Giants – I think several teams are in such a precarious position because if you're a Giants fan, you're looking at it like this. It's not Joe Shane. It's not Brian Dable's guy. They didn't draft him. That's a get him and draft. They already got rid of, you know, Saquon signs with the Philadelphia Eagles. So <clears throat> I think I'm just skittish at this point with these quarterbacks. i rather go with what i already seen. And the sample size is Jones is very sporadic and inconsistent at times and can't stay healthy. But then you'll get that moment where he looks really good a la on the road against Minnesota in the playoffs. So that's kind of where I'm at with the quarterbacks. Yes, Q. And, and, you know, when you look at these first round bonus quarterbacks, it's just teams reach for them over and over again. Look, look at the example of Trey Lance. You know, the Niners had to have him. They traded up to get him. And then he was like, this guy really can't play. And then they trade him to Dallas. And how many years has it been? He hasn't even really set foot on the field and made a difference. And and I could go on and on. As I said, I, I went back as a fun little experiment looking at all these first-round quarterbacks since 2000. And you just have too many Jake Lockers in the group and, and guys like that, you know, guys that just didn't pan out. And, and scouts could um, – Hammer with these guys and and teams know they need a quarterback, but they reach just too much for some of these guys. And, and you know, I'm hearing Drake may may be that guy this season too. You know, a lot of people, him and JJ McCarthy. You know, uh, Drake may very good in his first couple of years at North Carolina, but last year he was you know a little tentative, did not make all the throws. And and then you talk about JJ McCarthy. You know, he was the guy in the car. He wasn't driving the car that national championship team. You know. Uh, I just don't know if he's a difference maker. So these guys, these first round quarterbacks that fail, they are coach killers and GM killers. So uh, if I'm the Giants, why not give Jones another opportunity? And we know Drew, uh, we know Locke's behind him. He's not going to push him, but why not give him a chance? And and they could win 10 games. You know, it, <laughs> I mean, I, it would be a shock, but they can win 10 games and not have to have this first round bonus baby quarterback. Yeah, I mean, the way the NFL is, you can be really bad one season, then be marginal, be competitive the next. Um, I still think Harrison's the best player coming out, the best wide receiver. Look, I know the other kid's really good as well. I don't think you can go wrong with either one of them. But ultimately, you're going to see willing dealings. You're going to see teams that are going to kind of move up because they also understand some of these GMs going in are on the hot seat. Some of these head coaches, they're lame duck. You know, this report coming out that Kraft basically was – bad-mouthing Belichick. I mean, think about that when he was going to go and interview with the Atlanta Falcons. I think I told you this during the season. I think I might have said it last year. Belichick, it's so known that Bill Belichick has such a genuine affinity and love for the New York Giants. If it goes out the window next year for Dayball and the Giants and they go 6-11, and 5-12 and 12 again and it blows up, you know, Dayball's going to be gone. I mean, that's just, it, it's just, it's what have you done for me lately? It doesn't matter if you, I've seen coaches win playoff games and then the head coach of the year, and then the next season or two, they've been fired. We've seen that before in the NFL. So I just find it, I still believe that that name is going to be tossed around when head coaches and teams struggle. But point being, if you're a GM and you're a head coach and you know you're on shaky ground going in the draft, going in the season, you damn well better get the pick, right? And again, ultimately, it is such 
a crapshoot. It is. And, and uh, yeah, I wanted to talk to you about that point you just brought up with, with Kraft and, and Belichick. You know, we talked about this all along. There was a fracture in that relationship. You know, all those championships, you know, six Super, so, super Bowls they brought Kraft, brought him only so much, you know, leeway. And and Belichick is a control freak. He's a guy that has to control everything. And, and he got control of the personnel department. He did a terrible job. Too many to kill Harry type picks in the first round and, and not a lot of difference makers. And you saw that in the roster. It just could not compete the last couple of years. And, you know, he goes down to Atlanta. Uh, Blank is very good friends with, with Kraft and some of these all other high powered owners, you know, there's pecking order in the owner's ranks. And, and these two guys are at the top of the list, you know, in terms of talking to each other. And, and he definitely was like, look, man, it, he's tough to get along with. And then you have Terry Fontenot there. Uh, the GM, he's a good young GM with the Falcons, and he's building some things. But Belichick obviously would come in there and try to usurp him. So I think the Falcons are like, look, we're not getting involved here. But the fun thing is we talked about the three teams uh, in NFC East, and, and they logically, if one of these coaches fails, whether it's McCarthy, Sirianni, or Dayball, you know, they this could be a landing spot for them because we know these, co these owners want to make a big splash, and, and particularly Jerry Jones. And I can see Lori maybe in looking at him because Sirianni is a lame duck as well. He's in the last year of his contract. They have not given him extension. Yeah, that's a real good point too. Something to kind of keep an eye out for. And, you know, the antics are getting pretty old. Explain to me, though, how a coach with over 331, 333 to be exact, six Super Bowl rings, 30 years as a head coach, and boom, you're going to talk bad about this guy. I mean, single-handedly lifted up the New England Patriots franchise turned into a dynasty along with a quarterback named Tom Brady. But I just find it fascinating that, you know, look, you're, you're going to vet, but when you say the name Bill Belichick, it's not Joe Schmo. It's not Nick Sirianni, like the body of work. It speaks for itself. Hey, by the way, speaking of um, Sirianni and the Philadelphia Eagles, Devonta Smith, uh, not bad, man. Nice little uh, contract extension. Uh, look, I, we, we know that, in the NFL, tackles, defensive tackles, offensive tackles, edge rushers, DBs, and now the wide receivers along with uh, the quarterbacks, not the running backs, those are the guys that are going to get paid. Uh, I mean, listen, he's a really good wide receiver on an offense that already has the makings to be pretty explosive. So you just kind of knew it was only a matter of time before the kid was going to get paid. Yeah, the, Eagle, the Eagles, they have a philosophy, and, and they just they, they pick young players on our roster to give these extensions to and keep them around, you know, on that that second contract. And Devontae Smith yep. is that guy uh, in terms of, you know, they gave one to Landon Dickerson, their offensive guard now, it's Devontae Smith's turn. And the Eagles are interesting because they have two receivers over a thousand yards and, and they're trying to make this work now. Phew, they're paying a lot. Both of them over $20 million, you know, a lot of money locked up in that position. And, and you wonder, is that going to work? You look at a team like the Bengals, you know, they're trying to figure it out with Jamar Chase and T. Higgins, and probably one of those guys is going to have to go. So, you know, the Eagles have a lot locked up in the wide receiver position. We'll see if they're able to work around that in terms of some of the other guys that are going to be looking for money. You saw them get rid of Son Reddick. I think that was a money issue as well. So they got to do well in this draft and, and, We've known over the years, you and I always talk after the draft, they've, Eagles have had some head-scratching picks, and they can't afford that this year where they have to do well in the draft. But good signing there with Devontae Smith, 2,000-yard receivers. Now they got to work with their quarterback, and they gave all that money to as well. Jalen Hurts, uh, can he make the difference with these two guys? So 2021 first-round draft class, number six overall pick, Jaden Waddle. Did they pick up his option? Yes. Devontae Smith. Option picked up. Yes. Uh, Jalen Phillips, did they pick up his option? Yes. So uh, as you mentioned, you know, you want to get these guys uh, locked in. What about Miami and Tua? I mean, there's some thoughts, some GM, some former GM, some scouts, you know, some talking heads believe that he is not in line, nor should he be in line for a new contract. I, I disagree. I, I don't know. I think people look at Tua where he's so hit or miss but he's just put up consistent numbers for the Miami Dolphins. What's your thoughts on Tua going forward in Miami? You definitely have to extend Tua. He's their guy. You know, it, 
They believed in him. He came back healthy last year. That was always the big question mark. Could he survive a whole season? And and he played well, come back from crushing the issue the year before. And and I thought uh, he been you know the beginning obviously his season was a lot better than the end of it for the Miami Dolphins. But uh, he did a nice job. But there are so many weapons down there for him to work with Tariq Hill and, and Mostert and the rest of the guys that you named. Um, but of course, bringing back you, you see all the other quarterbacks getting paid. Kyler Murray, Daniel Jones, you talked about earlier. I mean, I consider him in the same kind of tiers. Those guys, so why not pay him and and give him his extension? Obviously, though, it kind of it puts a saddle on a team in terms of you paying your quarterback so much. Are you going to be able to get everybody else on the salary cap though? I still think he's a very good quarterback, and I know other players have to get paid. I mean, look, you can look at that AFC East. You can sit there and say the Jets are making all the right moves. Buffalo, the window's closed, and New England's on a rebuild. I think Miami is still going to be there um, at the end of the day. I really do. Uh, I know Cleveland was talking about the Deshaun Watson coming back, throwing full speed. Uh, I mean, listen, do you believe we're ever going to see Deshaun Watson like we saw several years ago when he was with Houston? You know, it's interesting. It's that time of year. Everybody's looking great. They're, you know, they're in the best shape of their life, and it's going to be interesting to see uh, how he shows up. I, I just don't think he's ever going to be that Pro Bowl-level quarterback that he was when he was with Houston. He was just so explosive, and, you know, he could move around the pocket. Now he just seems tentative. He seems rusty after that 22-month-plus layoff, and uh, I just don't know, know if he'll ever overcome that. But uh, he's got Cooper there. He's got some weapons to work with. But uh, I'd say he's out of the top 10, and I don't think he's ever going to be a lead again. All right. I know later in the week we'll continue with the NFC. I Listen, I would be remiss. I mean, I got to ask you, uh, you know, O.J. Simpson, the people look at him and obviously go to the murder trial and everything and getting off. And then you look at O.J. Simpson, a football player. Um, you know, it's kind of, you know, I mean, listen, I, I, I'm not losing any sleep over his passing, to be quite honest with you. But from a football standpoint, you know, you're talking about first running back over 2000 yards, I think was 73 was part of that electric, uh, you know, that electric company, uh, that Buffalo squad um, when and I know it's hard, but put aside the off, 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 off the field. And I know it's very, very hard to do, but just put inside the off the field if you look at his numbers at the end of the day, so he ran for the Bills from 69, 77, had a cup of coffee with the 49ers, 77, 78. NFL's most valuable player, 73. Offensive player of the year, 73. Five-time first-team All-Pro, five-time Pro Bowl. Um, you know, just record after record after record. At the end, uh, 11,000 yards, almost five yards a tote. Listen, College Football Hall of Fame, Pro Football Hall of Fame, OJ the running back, not the person. OJ the running back. It, 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 it's, you know, you always got to agree, you know, with, with these guys is after playing career. And, and when you see the highlights, you know, you, uh, you're an NFL films guy, and and I used to go over there. And, and I remember there was a quarterback I was looking at, some of his, and, and it was a game footage where OJ played, and you're just, like, watching him run the football behind Reggie McKenzie – and, and the power company, as yep. you're saying, you know, it was just like, wow, incredible. You know, the, the way he get out, get outside, uh, the cutting ability, breaking long runs. And a lot of seasons, he only played 14 games. You That's know? right. And, and, Great point. And he was putting up huge numbers, Q. And and but let's face it, the Buffalo Bills, Joe Ferguson was a quarterback. So you did not have that name brand quarterback there handing him the football. And, and uh, um Big time player and unfortunate what happened later on in his life. And, and you know, I'm sure you, you like I, have a lot of family members and people on social media talk to you about him and they can't get over it. Obviously, when you look at his football career, that was Hall of Famer, uh, well-deserved from his playing days. And and he's not a compiler. Like some of these guys now, uh, I, I'm, I think he's pretty far down on the list now. I think he's like number 11 or something on an all-time rushing list. But some of those guys that passed him, they they just did not have his ability. And he was a true difference maker. And then take it took to the next level uh in terms of acting and, and his charisma and the commercials, et cetera. Yeah. Uh you mentioned the two thousand yard mark. 
that was when the NFL had only 14 games per season as opposed to 16 yeah. game seasons that began in 1978. So, I mean, think about this as of 2013, which was a long time ago. Um, well, it was a long time ago, still holds rushing records for 14 games. Uh, but the numbers speak uh, to themselves behind that great offensive line. And it's funny too, because we all know about the Bronco chase and the, you know, the trial and the mer everything. And as a, as a, Younger man, all I remember was game five, NBA finals, Knicks and Houston Rockets, where NBC had to keep cutting away for this Bronco chase. And I'm like, what are we doing here? And I remember my father and I at the time went into the garage and listened to the end of the game on the radio, on the fan in New York. We had to keep going in and out. I was like, I don't need to see this nonsense. I don't I don't care if he's a Bronco, whatever. Get me to game five, NBA finals, 1993. Yeah, because everybody remembers where they were and all that was going on. And, and yeah. you know, I, I was out at happy hour with my buddies. And then I still remember all of them. Oh, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. You know, and it, it was, you know, but it was it was drama on the TV, you know. And it, it, yeah. it's yeah. unfortunate how it all played out. And, and then, you know, the divisiveness is the whole thing. And, and you know, it, you just have to say, great player. But Not after that, you know, it's just it, like, yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. much else you could talk about. And, and, and obviously, everybody brings it up. And like, how do you feel about this? I'm like, look, great player. But after that, I don't even want to get involved. Uh, yes. Last word for Lloyd Vance, host of Lloyd Vance's Insider Football 102.9, the game. And, of course, contributor right here on BYP, Back Your Play, and on Q. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rich Q on Q. Give us a follow on X at Rich Q on Q. Lloyd at Lloyd Mance. Later on in the week, we'll continue to look at the NFC as we kind of stockpile those divisions. We'll clean it up with the AFC, and then we got the draft next Thursday night. Uh, your guess is going to be as good as mine, but we do know one thing. The Bears are definitely going to go with a quarterback. His name, Caleb Williams, at the top spot, number one overall. So we'll see how the rest of those draft picks shake out as well. We'll kind of keep dissecting all these team needs in the offseason. And as always, don't forget, check out Lloyd, as I mentioned, uh, Lloyd Vance is Insider Football, 102.9 The Game, part of the Broad Street South Radio and Media Network. Appreciate a couple moments, pal. Thanks for having me on.